no longer a challenge by uh, Mr. Our dear colleague, actually, Mr. David uh, Curden. Um, a few logistical notes before we uh, begin. Uh, this uh, webinar, as you may know, is being recorded and will be posted to the Association of Independent Scholars for Social <coughs> Development uh, YouTube channel immediately after the event. Also, there is closed captioning available for this webinar, that is the closed caption button at the uh, bottom of your black uh, ribbon. Uh, and you can actually press that button and turn on the subtitles if needed. The, uh, <coughs> I want to remind you all that the Association of Independent Scholars for Social Development is providing this webinar as a public service. However, the views, thoughts, and opinions express, uh, expressed in this webinar belong only to the person expressing them and don't necessarily represent the views of the Association of Independent uh, Scholars for Social Development. We would also encourage you, uh, I mean the audience, uh, to uh, chime in your questions today for our guest, Mr. David, via the Q and answer uh, box at the ribbon at the bottom of your screen as well. We will try to address as many questions as we can uh, get once we conclude in chat. Uh, you can also click on the chat button to say hello to your colleagues or tell us where you are calling in from. Uh, try it now, see if it is working for you. And I will be in there chatting with you as well. Finally, just make sure that your microphones are muted so we can avoid any inter uh, interruptions during uh, our presentation. And now I will turn it over to our esteemed colleague, Mr. David Perdon, uh, who is an expert in the field in, in the work he does. Um, he is. <laughs> He is the English language specialist in the, in, uh, with the Institute for Population and Social Research uh, at uh, Maidol University in Bang Bangkok, Thailand. He is also a general manager and copy editor for the top tier Q2 Scopus Index Journal of Population and Social Studies with the same institute. In addition to being the recipient of several prestigious uh, international teaching awards for his contribution to global education. He has acquired exemplary teaching qualifications and certification, uh, certifications uh, along with the Bachelor in Secondary Education with Honours and the Master of Arts in Teaching with Honours, both with the uh, concentration in English. He is currently a uh, doctoral candidate in applied linguistics for English language teaching at King uh, Moncourt University of Technology, uh, Thornbury, uh, Thailand. Mr. David, uh, it's a wonderful to have you with us today. And now the floor is yours. Wow, wonderful, wonderful <laughs> introduction. Thank you. Um, you know, it, um, I've noticed that a bachelor in secondary education with honors and a master's of teaching with honors, but not not during my PhD. Oh no, my GPA is my my GPA is three point three seven. So wow, wow. No. we are we are very proud of you. We are very oh, proud. No. Of you. No. That's horrible. Three point three seven. You know, I'm lucky to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think I have, uh, oh, I'm sorry, how much time do I have? Well, I think uh, no more than one hour would be... Oh, no, okay. one hour is too much. So, so but I, at okay. least half an hour. We want yeah, to sure. know more about the subject. <laughs> at least half an hour. Okay, well, great. Well, you know, I started, started my timer. All right, let me share my screen here and we... We are going to get going. Now, foreign language anxiety, no longer a challenge. 
This is the first time I will do this type of presentation. I've done many, many, many presentations about foreign language anxiety, but never from this point of view. So, this is me. Yeah, uh, that's it. Everything Dr. Yaxer said. So, oh, and um, the Q2 Scopus, the Q2 Scopus Index Journal. I just wanted to plug plug our journal a little bit. We were Q4, and we were Q3 for a long time. And since I have been working there, uh, we have become Q2. And within the next couple of years, we will be at Q1. Um, I am the okay. journal manager, so you know uh, everyone works works diligently to make the journal the best. So just wanted to plug the journal up. So, okay, now, I always begin every presentation with a quote, because people, others are way more intelligent than I. So, you live a new life every new language you speak. If you know only one language, you live only once. Now, of course, of course, everyone here listening to me you are probably, you are probably uh, not a native English speaker, okay? So, English, English is one of, your, one of your other languages, one of your L2s, your second language. Or English could be a foreign language to you. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to confess something here. Um, I travel, well, well, sorry, not currently because of the coronavirus, but before I traveled all over the world, I would, I would regularly do rotations with 16 countries uh, promoting English, training teachers, uh, encouraging students, and I... I realized, I realized several years ago that what we think, what we think causes anxiety in the students is not what the students think. I, I will clarify that later. But I have had the opportunity during my tenure to speak with so many students, I mean hundreds upon hundreds of students from every age, every nationality, um, whatever. And when you ask, when you ask, okay, what are some problems you have with speaking English? That is a fair question. What are some problems or what are some issues you have with speaking English or using English? And most people, most people think immediately, that students will say grammar. You know, there is there there is just oodles and oodles of studies out out there, just so many studies, hundreds of studies, that say no, it's not grammar. The students are the students have this perception that that grammar is the big bad monster. Well, we will see during our time together that. Grammar is not really the issue. So, let's go. Um, when, when we think about language, when, I mean, just basic communication, we think about all these things, okay? Um, we think about language, and then, and then I'm studying English and applied linguistics, so what comes to my mind is proficiency, language proficiency, sentence structure, I even look at the I even look at semantics, I even look at syntax, all of these things and phonology and second language acquisition, all of all of all of these different terminologies. But the truth is when someone tries to speak English, they're not thinking about all these things, okay? Now I live in Thailand, and I have been living in Thailand for a very long time. And daily, 
high speed tie. And okay, I'm I I'm a reasonable communicator. I would say I would say maybe uh, maybe a two level. Okay, that's about it. But I can speak fairly well. Reading, reading, and writing, I'm like at kindergarten level. But I can, you know, I, I, I can communicate fairly well. Well, let me tell you, daily, every day, I make mistakes. I really do. See, Thai is, Thai is a tonal language, if you like to call it that. And there, there are five distinct tones. And these tones could be ma, 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 ma. Okay? Now, they all sound the same to me. But when a native Thai speaker says ma, 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 they're, they're completely different. So when I pronounce uh, Thai, sometimes, sometimes I might call a doctor a dog. Or I might call a dog a horse. Or, you know... And these things, I make these mistakes daily. And you know what? To be completely, completely honest with you, no one cares. There is not any person in this world who cares. Because Thai is not my language. Sorry, Thai is not my first language. So I will make mistakes. And sometimes I sound stupid. But... The, but native Thai speakers, you should see them. They look at me and they're like, it takes them a second to try to realize what I'm saying, but they know, and no one cares. I'm not, I'm not using Thai as as a technical language. So, just as just as a basic communicative language, no one cares. So why is there so much anxiety? Why is there so much anxiety when using English? Why is there so much anxiety? You know, when I travel to Indonesia, I try to speak Bahasa Indonesian with my friends. And okay, Indonesian is a little easier for me to pronounce than, than Thai. And even, and even when I try to speak Japanese, it's same. It's, it's, Japanese is so much easier to speak than Thai. Now, reading Japanese, yeah, don't even talk to me. Just reading, I, I don't think I will ever do that. <laughs> but speaking Japanese, speaking Indonesian, French, Spanish, Filipino, these languages are very easy for me. When I try to speak Mandarin, Chinese, or Thai, yeah, I make mistakes all the time. And you know... I do not feel any pressure. I do not feel any anxiety. So, why is there so much anxiety? Why do, why do people feel so uptight and so afraid? Well, let me backtrack a little bit. I do not feel anxiety because I eliminated one factor from my speaking life. I will touch on that in just a moment. Now, you know, as as Doctor as Doctor Yasser said earlier, I I tend to work with foreign language anxiety quite a bit. We did a study a few months ago, and this presentation is about that study. And currently, I am doing a very large study, a study all across Thailand with several hundred participants from just every different demographics you can imagine. So, um, I pilot study gave us some interesting answers that are not necessarily in the current literature. Now, let's go. What is, what is foreign language anxiety? Well, it's sort of self-explanatory. Foreign language anxiety. Anxiety with speaking foreign language. That's it. Now, it is, you know, um, foreign language anxiety, I'm just going to I'm going to use FLA from here on out because foreign language anxiety is too much for me to say. So F FLA, it really is. It really is this 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 feeling of, of mild to severe fear, apprehension. Um, 
I've seen, I've seen second language speakers, English as a second or foreign language speakers, I've seen them cry. I'm talking about high school students, university students, adults. I've seen them cry when faced with speaking English. I've seen them run away. I've seen university students say, listen, I'll, I will take the F. I'm not speaking. And this is before they know me. But after they spend time with me, there's very little FLA. Why? What is different? What is so different from what I do with them to what has been done to them before? Hmm. Now, FLA le leads to some negative behaviors. It really does. And these, these behaviors, they do differ. They do differ according to culture and uh, language proficiency. Yes, 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 yes. But I find, I find that um, regardless of culture, people have this fight, flight, or freeze response. They really do. You know, um, yesterday I went to one of the local, one of the local department stores. Uh, sorry, one of one of the local malls, and I walked into a shop in there, and I speak Thai well enough to communicate with the with the workers. But you know, when this person saw me, they froze, and they ran. They froze, turned, and ran. It was, this is, this is the typical behavior that I see with Thai adults. Young people are a little less anxious to speak with me, but with Thai adults, they have this perception, <gasps> foreigner, white guy, English, ah! and they run away. So I have to stop them and I have to ask in Thai, in Thai, I said, Excuse me, can you speak Thai? I cannot speak English very well. I tell them in Thai, in Thai, excuse me, can you speak Thai? I cannot speak English very well. I do that, well, I do it secretly to be a little sarcastic because it because it's insulting when they when they run away, but I also do it to, to try to break break that ice and make them feel comfortable. And look, I've really seen, I have really, really seen students perspire, shiver, even want to pass out. I've seen that when they have to speak English. And with, with adults, this, this communication limiting, I've seen that. I've, well, I actually see it, continually see this. So why, why are adults 40, 50, 60 years old. Why are they behaving this way? That was what we looked at in our research. So the fight, the fight, flight, or free response, that's so overwhelming, and the withdrawals and the, the avoidance behaviors and these physical manifestations. Why are these things happening? Why? Well, we in our studies, we we wanted to find the sources of, of FLA. Now, so much, so much literature has speculated. It has speculated about the sources of foreign language anxiety. Well, we, we found in our study, we found in our study four sources of FLA. Negative criticism, self-doubt, fear of embarrassment, and feeling of guilt. Again, negative criticism, self-doubt, fear of embarrassment, and feeling of guilt. But if these are adults, I wanted to see, well, my team and I, we wanted to see what was the source. Where did these feelings begin? Because you know all of us here are adults. And if we have a fear of something, that, that fear had to begin somewhere. So, we looked, we, we looked at negative criticism, and we asked, I mean, we really asked. We, we, we wanted to know 
where did this where did this begin? And you know, we found, I'm sorry, but we found that this concern about negative criticism was linked to stress during secondary education. Stress. The teachers, the teachers, the, the teachers uh, the teachers bully the students. And we found that sorry, we found that that adults Adults, even now, you know, being being out of high school 20, 25 years, they still experience that same stress. And when they experience that same anxiety, they their minds automatically go back to their experiences in secondary education. And, you know, we found that um, we found out of everyone who we interviewed, we found that the teacher bullying the teacher bullying, uh, you're stupid. Okay, I'm going to share with you some, just some comments, okay? And these comments are being published now. Our, um, our article is under consideration now. We should be doing the revisions within the next couple of weeks. So we found that uh, teachers, Thai teachers, secondary teachers of English, we found that um, they told the secondary students that you are stupid. You are stupid because your parents are stupid. Uh, in Thai, calling someone a buffalo is a derogatory uh, term. So if you call someone a buffalo, that means that they're stupid, they're ignorant, they're difficult to control. So these, these adults told us that their teachers would call them stupid, call them buffaloes, and even hit them. Hit them. Um, I mean, like, I, I don't mean just with a, with a little ruler. I mean, slap them in the face, hit them with a ruler to where the ruler would break the skin, make them bleed if they made a mistake. Well, would you want to speak English if someone was going to abuse you every time you made a slight mistake? No. That would create some serious anxiety in me. So we found that this negative criticism, this abuse, this bullying, led to this feeling of uncertainty about foreign language proficiency. Okay, think about it. Abuse, bullying, criticism. That would make you doubt yourself. Sure, of course. You know, so this self, this self-doubt. The self-doubt was linked to concerns about their language proficiency. Now, the adults, now I'm, I'm talking about adults, the average age was 40 years old, okay? So I'm talking about adults who have been out of high school for a long time. Even today, even today, they worry about their language proficiency because they, they associate mistakes with abuse, mistakes with bullying, mistakes with bullying from their classmates. You know, we had people, we had people tell us that if they made mistakes, their teacher would hit them, would slap them, would criticize them, their friends would criticize them and bully them. But if they, if they spoke English very well, sometimes better than the teacher, the teacher would hit them, criticize them, bully them. If, if they spoke English better than their classmates, their classmates would bully them. So, you know, if you speak English well or you speak English not so well, you're bullied and you are attacked. So why even try to speak English? And because, because they're not trying to speak English, their English proficiency deteriorates, okay? And just like, just like the first category, these learners, they really were ridiculed. They really were ridiculed. And some of, some, now, when they have to work, and if they work in international settings, and they see me, I walk up and I say, hello, in an international setting, in a professional setting, they look so foolish to them. They feel that they look so foolish. 
and they feel embarrassed. And they actually believe that, that me, a native English speaker, I will correct them and I will ridicule them. But like I said earlier, there's something that I do that reduces the anxiety in my students and in people who I speak with in professional settings. When they make a mistake, I don't even bother with it. What am I supposed to do? Oh, that minor mistake interfered with your communication. No, why would I do that? If they, if they, if someone mispronounces a word so, so badly that I have difficulty understanding them, I just simply say, sorry, what, what was that again? Um, you know, and I smile and they're like, oh, yes, yes. And if they start to feel embarrassed, I say, look, no, no, there's no need to be embarrassed. I want to understand you. I am using effort to listen to you because I care about what you're saying. So speak freely. And if there's something I'm not clear about, I, I will stop you. No problem. And so uh, the feeling, the fear of embarrassment, you know, they're the students in secondary education and in tertiary in education, matter of fact, they are embarrassed and they have this distress and they're worried about speaking slowly or making errors in their language production. And they feel, oh my goodness, I'm going to be embarrassed when I make the mistake. Because their past, when they made a mistake, the teacher would call them out in front of the class, sometimes make them stand against the blackboard. One student said the teacher would draw a circle on the blackboard and they would have to put their nose on the blackboard and keep it there. Now, look, I'm sorry. I, I am American. I have European ancestry, so I have a big nose. If I put my nose on, on the blackboard back, that's fine. But my Thai students, their nose is, a, you know, it's a little short. It's not, you know, it's, you know, it's not as big as mine. So when they put their nose against the blackboard, well, their, their mouth is touching the blackboard. So, you know, it's, it's not, it's not very hygienic. So, oh, sorry, uh, the countdown timer. Do you see it? Yeah, you still have, uh, Let's say, uh, yeah, yeah. So we can actually create another uh, link. So okay. what you suggest? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Because actually, the topic is very interesting. But at the same time, I think there is a kind of humiliation to students. This is, I mean, this is open. So how did you, we want to know actually, how did yep. you succeed to overcome this issue because it is it has nothing to mm -hmm. do with learning at all nope and yeah. well um the last part is this feeling of guilt so these adults they spend all their life afraid to learn english now that they are adults they can't speak english and they feel guilty and you know this all stems from their from the humiliation they felt, the abuse they experienced. So, we know it's completely normal to, if we know it's completely normal to experience that anxiety because we, we, need, we need to become conversational. So how can we overcome FLA? And this is, this is the question Dr. Yasser just asked. It's easy, very, very easy, you know? I show this, I show this uh, picture every time. Okay, if we're unsure, hey, Google Translate works very well. <laughs> Google Translate works very well. But it doesn't matter. When we try to speak, our tongue is always tied in knots. Our brain is tied in knots. I mean, everything is just tied up. And sometimes we can't get the words out. So I asked hundreds of people, hundreds of people, what issues do you really have? And you know, it was so simple. They said pronunciation, vocabulary. 
And sometimes, sometimes we have difficulty understanding other people who might have, a, you know, a little stronger accents. I said, what about grammar? Eh, we think about sentence structure a little bit, but not really much. And, you know, the literature says pronunciation and vocabulary are the two main issues that most people need to overcome. So I suggest, look, instead of, instead of being anxious, just prepare yourself. When you know you need to speak with someone, practice. That's it, practice. When I need to have a conversation in Thai, a few minutes before I meet that person, I'm going over in my mind what I want to say. And I even sometimes speak out loud or I practice with someone. Sure, yeah, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself and you will reduce your anxiety. Look, prepare these phrases in your head. Try to work out these scenarios. Try. And next, put yourself in the other person's shoes. So if you put yourself in the other person's shoes, you will know, you will understand that, look, if Surya and I, we speak often. Surya is a very good English speaker, but Surya is not, it is not a native English speaker. Surya makes, makes mistakes all the time. But, but you know, I never tell Surya, oh, that's a mistake. Why? Why? Because Surya talks and talks about all kinds of things. And I put myself in Surya's shoes. How do you think she would feel if I corrected her every time she made a mistake? She would not want to speak with, with me. And I would create so much anxiety in her to where she would not want to speak with anyone. So, empathy, empathy. And you know, look, the second to last point, native English speakers do not expect someone who is learning English to speak perfectly. Of course not. Come on, look, you, to be honest with you, if you speak English perfectly, then you speak English better than me. Because even as a native English speaker, I make mistakes. It's no big deal. I make mistakes. That's normal. You, you said I make a mistakes, and this is actually a mistake. You see? <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> see? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. So, I mean, it's, it's no big deal. You know, it's no big deal. So, uh, practice with someone you... You trust. I practice with my wife all the time when I want to say something in Thai, and she helps me. Practice with someone you trust. If you need to have an English conversation, practice with someone. It's easy. If you practice, if you prepare, the, the anxiety will be much, much less. And look, the, the thing is, if you make a mistake, sometimes you recognize it. Sometimes you don't, and it's no big deal, because the truth is, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Now, I do this all the time. I make a little cheat sheet. I make a cheat sheet. If I want to say something in Thai, I write it karaoke style, you know, phonetically, in English. <laughs> I make a cheat sheet. Don't worry about it. Just don't. Don't stress. Just put together a cheat sheet, something about sentences, phrases, whatever you need to say. Again, no one cares. People are very understanding. Memorize a few standard phrases. You know, several, well, many years ago, when I tried to, when I first learned to speak Thai, this is what I did. I memorized a few standard phrases. And I, I use those phrases, and it helps me overcome anxiety. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Can you, can you repeat that, please? Can you speak more slowly, please? It's okay. Look, everyone understands. So whatever, whatever anxiety you have, just, just practice, prepare, 
Write, write some phrases. Practice makes perfect again and again and again. Keep practicing, okay? And you will, you will be better. You will be better. So let me tell you this right here. We're almost out of time. Change is the end result of all true learning. The more you learn, the more you do, the more you practice, your proficiency will change and you will become a better.